Hey guys, so today I'm going to teach you how to fully clean an Epilogue Legend series uh, laser cutter engraver. Um, you've already checked out my other videos if you have a mini, I'm sure, and, and that goes over everything there as well. So just to, to get in here to open it, and you can see you've got access. The Legend series is really nice. You have access to get into the whole machine um, from the front without any big issues. Now, as far as the optics go on the Legend, you've got one mirror here with a removable housing down here for your lens. You've got another mirror right here. And then back here, you've actually got where the laser originates from. Now, these are the three parts that need to be cleaned. Four, if you count that as two. I count it as one. But anyways, so you've got lens, mirror, mirror, lens. Done. And technically, this is just glass, but it gets dirty. Um, then you've got this rail that pops on and off with a simple screwdriver. And that's where you're going to get into... your encoder strip, uh, that's where your air assist tube is, and all of that stuff. Now the front screws, you can go ahead and pop out, or you can leave them in, it really doesn't matter. Um, I always take them out and set them off to the side. The back screws, you just need to loosen. And technically you can just loosen all of the screws. But I got into a habit a long time ago of removing the front screws and just loosening the back. So that's what I do. Um, and then this just pops off and you can see there's a lot of trash and dust that gets inside here. So we're gonna clean it. We'll set it off to the side. We'll clean it before we put it back on. You also have back here, this is where your actual airflow gets pulled in. So you end up with a lot of trash in there. And we're gonna clean it out as well. And I'm gonna bring the camera down here and show you a little bit closer what I'm talking about here you see it's just nasty stuff in there of course we're going to clean our rails to keep our lines where we can uh, see them and we've got our lens here we've got an air hose that is nice and and taut the belts nice and tight we'll check that while we got it open and we have another mirror right here and it's got a simple screw on the back you loosen it and the mirrors on the EX series just pop right out and you can see just in the center where the laser's been hitting, there's started to get some accumulation of dust. So we'll set that off to the side. We'll go ahead, we'll pull this out. We'll set that off to an opposite side. We don't want these two to, to get mixed up. Now, inside here, this piece, the piece that I'm touching right here, that is your encoder strip. Now. If it gets really dirty, we could take it out and fully clean it. And since this video is about fully cleaning, we're going to. So we're going to look at it from the back back here. And you can see there's a shit ton of little screws. And they go all the way across to let this out. There's a whole metal plate and everything. Now, you can just clean this real simple with q-tips and distilled water just clean the front clean the back however I've been having issues where I'm just slightly tight few thousandths of an inch and because of that it irks me so I'm actually going to take the whole thing off and and do it that way now to take it off properly we're going to get our hex that's this guy right here and we're going to go ahead and take off the reader so let's scoot this back a little just to give the camera a little space to maneuver. Now this comes off with two screws. You sit there and that's one screw. And we're going to clean it also. The reader, the housing, everything, we're going to clean all of it. So once you take those two screws, this is loose and can move. But 
the air assist hose feeds in here. So you can either unbolt this or oh I do screws going loose. Let's take them out. We're gonna put them over here in the safe storage area. See we can take this and turn it now without taking this all the way off. Uh, we can just pop this on and off but it's a plastic hose and over time it'll get a little bit janky so if you just feed it back like that you can actually move it right here out of the way and you're good to go. Now be mindful of your cable. Okay so I'm going to move the camera and take all the screws out and we're going to take this guy straight out of there real quick. I say real quick, it ain't real quick. There's a lot of screws here. But I want to get it done. Now, once it pops off, This is what you're looking at. And although it may look clean, it definitely is not. Be careful with it. I'm going to set it over here. And just to show you how many screws, this is, this is how many screws there were. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. 20 screws and look at that dirt and crap that's in there. Now, we're going to clean this up. And to do that, we're going to use some distilled water. And we're going to clean all of this up and we're going to do that with distilled water that you can buy at the store. And basically what I like to do is so I'll take it and I'll pinch it between my fingers and slowly just go over it and over it and over it again. You want to be gentle. You don't want to Bend it the wrong way. Keep in mind, most of the time you can get by with just cleaning it while it still stays in the rack using wet Q-tips distilled water. That's all it takes. All right, now that is good and clean. We're going to set it someplace that's not dirty on top of something clean for now. I also want to clean this rail. And just to show you what came off of, uh, that's what came off of it. And I had cleaned it previously today, so I didn't take it out and clean it, obviously. I wanted to save that for this video. Okay, this is all the junk that's on this rail. Now while I've got it out, I'm going to go ahead and clean the tray that sits up under it. And that's where this ribbon runs and also half the belt. We're going to clean where the belt's at also.
go ahead and take off the apparatus that holds on this guy. And it actually comes off with a straight Phillips as well. And the space so I can get straight on this. And a bigger bit. There we go. And this just slides straight off like this. And then you can see inside there all the nasty dust and dirt that's built up. Now be mindful not to bend your air assist or else you'll end up with a lot of flare-ups. And if you end up with flare-ups, then you can always come back and straighten this out with pliers. We're going to set this over here out of my way. I'm also going to go ahead and get another rag. Just get in here, get all this dust out. Now, do not get confused. You don't want to mess with the inside of this tray. That's where your grease is going to be. You don't want to jank it up. Not yet. We'll mess with it in a minute. Now, where's my credit card? Playing card works just fine. Credit cards are generally too thick. And we'll take and we'll wet it just a little with some distilled water. All right, and then we go to the reader, and that's this right here. And you just take, you pull this nice and snug, and you just feed through it a few times. Just like this. And it'll get any trash that's in there to come right on out. Now, once we have all of this done, it's time to go ahead and put back the railing and, and we're going to put it back in a position where we can read the lettering from the front as we put it in. Once you line it up, you'll go ahead and pinch it in place until you get the first screws in. Or else it'll try to pop out on you, and you just don't want that. I need to switch back to the smaller driver head. That's this one. There's one, and we're going to slide this all the way forward. Get a few of these screws. Careful not to drop them. If you're clumsy, what you can do is take a piece of cardboard and just slide it under just like this. So if you drop a screw, it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, now that that's done, what we're going to do is we're going to feed this back through the hose to get it right. And then set it right where it's been. Make sure that this reader sets down over top of
the actual encoder strip. That's nice and snug. We'll straighten back out our ribbon cable. We can go ahead and get this out of the way. Slide this on back a bit. And now it's time to clean our optic. So I like to use Q-tips, plenty of them. And Epilogue actually supplies you with this uh, cleaning stuff for all the optics. We just put a few drops on here. And we get in here and we clean. Now you can remove this, but there's really no reason to. As long as the lens is clean and looks good it's nothing but a piece of glass so we use it we throw it away we get another one and we're going to go ahead and do the mirror a few drops and do the mirror i'm going to scrub the whole mirror nicely i'm going to throw that away and we're going to get a clean piece of cotton cloth and buff it out And you'll buff it until that mirror looks brand new. You don't want to leave any kind of smudge, no footprints or fingerprints, nothing. And I'm hoping that you can see this. I'll turn it from side to side and just so you can see how clean it is. And then we slowly lower it back in place and then we tighten the nut that holds it in place. It's just a little screw. And then we'll move on to the next. Get us a Q-tip, a couple of drops, and we're going to scrub it together. Get it nice and clean, and we throw that away. We go back to the cloth. I've got another end, and we buff it out until it shines brand new and gorgeous. And then this guy goes right here. And then it locks in place, tighten it down, and it's good. It doesn't go anywhere. After that, we have the actual lens. Now, we can take the lens out with these four screws, but there's really no need to if you take the housing off. What we do, a couple of drops straight on there. And we just go to town. And again, the cloth, we can get it in there. And that is perfectly clean. And we're going to go ahead and do the bottom of it just the same. Post the drop on, scrub it up. And then, just like before, until it is perfectly clean. And you can see that area where we scrubbed it. Well, that's fine. We did not bend or move the air assist hose. Um, we can actually go ahead and clean while we've got it open like this. We can go ahead and clean the plunger just to get it done. And just regular distilled water is normally fine enough to get any gunk or whatever away from the tip.
If you do clean it, make sure that you don't accidentally touch the lens. Okay, so now that that's clean, I'll double check that I didn't accidentally touch my lens. It's still clean. So we can take this and we can just slide it back in place. And it'll slide just like that and sit. And you can actually start the screws by hand before you finish it with the driver. Now remember we need the bigger one for this. Just slightly snug, you don't have to over tighten. Okay, now once that's done, I'm going to go pour a little bit more water in my rag. Okay, we're going to clean the housing. Like I said, we set it aside for a reason. Most of this is just dust that will clean up really easy. Some of it, not so much. But I tend to clean my laser fully about once a month. And I clean it almost every day for a quick clean the optics and go kind of deal. You can tell I clean it so much the paints come off in that one spot. But once I get that done, you can see how nasty this is. That rag is officially done. And I'll come back and I'll go ahead and get the dust off the top of the housing. There's no reason to put dust back in my machine. It's going to get dusty enough on its own. Okay. Now, once that's done, we carefully lower it down onto the screws. Now, I left my back screws sitting there just for this occasion. They're there. They're ready. I can go ahead and tighten them down. And my back screws are good. Now, I bought my machine second hand, so I'm missing two of the front screws. Which means I'm only going to put the three in the middle. Because if it's going to be jiggling loose, I'd rather it be at the ends where I don't have to worry too much about it. And really, it doesn't jiggle much. Now, with that, we have fully cleaned the optics and the encoder strip fully. So, I mean, it's ready to go. Now, beyond this, we're going to go ahead and just do a little bit of maintenance cleaning. And that's really just these pieces here. Just because I like to be able to read the numbers on my strip. And to clean this, you can just use a simple damp sponge. You don't want to use anything too abrasive. It'll take the numbers off. Okay, now once I get that done, I'll come back behind with one of my clean rags and just take it straight away. And that we just took off of there. Now, for a regular, normal, once a month cleaning, this is all you have to do. That's 100%, you're good. About once a year, you need to actually open the back of the machine before cleaning the optics, and you need to clean out all of the dust and dirt that builds up on the coil and the fans. That's about once a year, and it keeps your 
stuff from overheating. Now, once we've got all this done, I'm going to turn it on. It'll go ahead and boot itself back up and we will run a test file to double check, make sure everything is running smooth. And there we have perfect engraving with all the tiny details, no squiggly lines or anything, and a beautiful cut. We are all set. So guys, I want to thank you for checking out my video. And if you haven't already, please like, share, or subscribe to my channel for more cool how-tos and tutorials. Thank you.